my friends. My name is Stephanie and today I'm going to unpack my music teacher baggage. So before I get into actually unpacking, I want to get into why I am doing this. Today is the very last day of summer vacation, which is like, what is even the point of having a birthday in August if you have to work? I'm going to be going into my eighth year of teaching music, elementary music in particular, and I had a really interesting year last year. So I injured my shoulder in January of 2017 and basically worked the whole last part of that year and the whole first part of last year injured. I don't have a classroom at my schools. I travel between two or four elementary schools. So I have to carry all my stuff with me. That's not fun when you have a tear in your labrum. I had shoulder surgery in December and then was supposed to come back in March, but when I tried to do my regular job the regular way, it was not happy, so I just elected to take the rest of the school year off. Needless to say, psychologically, this was very difficult, and my therapist when I told her about doing this video, she encouraged me to do it before school gets started, and I said, I will do it. So this is for Kristen, it's for me. If you are also a music teacher who deals with multiple sites, or just someone who deals with lots of stuff for your work, this is for you too. So all this stuff was in my trunk, my car is basically my office, and I'm going to start with this trumpet. This is an old ambassador that I got off of eBay. I wanted a trumpet that I could use to demonstrate to kids that wasn't necessarily a fancy shiny trumpet that someone would be tempted to steal, but I know that old ambassadors are a nice, solid, older brand of trumpet, so I got this. There's a little dent in the bell. I play it to show the kids that you don't need to have a shiny instrument to sound good and to do your job. Here it is with my mouthpiece. I also use this trumpet for outdoor gigs and casual gigs, ones where I don't necessarily have to sound like a concert musician. Now I think I'm gonna be working in somewhat backwards order. I had a box in my car with this pile of stuff. First of all, this was going to be my binder where I planned all my lessons. On the left side, I have a bunch of music where I was studying the parts, things that I borrowed from friends. Oh, looks like there's some evaluation forms. I have my original for my, my Long Tones journal. Basically, I would time the kids in how long they could play a note, and I would have a timer up and they had to keep track of how many seconds, and they would write the date and how many seconds they could hold a note. What I wanted to happen was that I would have them look at their growth from October to May and see if there was improvement, and of course there's going to be in a very beginning musician, um, but I didn't see my kids after December. I was so gung-ho about the whole National Core Arts Standards that I printed all of them out. I, I put them on a piece of paper so I could brainstorm ways that I could reach those standards with my students. You know, my first year band students who are learning how to sit in a chair. They're going to be able to identify how knowledge of context and the use of repetition similarities and contrasts inform the response to music and appropriate. I actually was doing a pretty good job at this, and so I'm, I'm kind of sad I was on a roll. That it was my seventh year teaching, it was the first time I'd ever actually made lessons and designed unit plans based on the standards, so it's kind of sad to see that crumble last year. This is a written planner. It's a weekly teacher planner. I would write down where I went and what each class was going to do. See, this is the week of August 28th, and this is the week of September 11th. 
I'm not very good at planning. Well, I am good at planning, but I'm not very good at having a thing and having to write it down because I don't have a desk. Hashtag baggage. I bought brightly colored paper so that when I made stuff like long tones journals and like goals, um, they could all be on different colors of paper and I could say, hey, get out your purple long tone journal and we're gonna do long tones. So they could identify and um, do stuff. However, it doesn't really work when three of the shades of paper are <laughs> different shades of blue. From that pile, we move on to my canvas tote bag. First of all, this is very cool. This thing that is tied to the handle here. You unscrew one side. It has a thing here for springs, for pushing springs. Like if you, if a flute spring came out of, um, if a flute spring came out of alignment, it also has a hook. Um, so you can pull springs back into alignment on that side. And on this side, a little screwdriver for if woodwind screws get out of alignment. These things work really well if they are in a place that's easily findable, like on the handle of your bag. One time, a student's screw became loose, and I spent like five minutes looking in the bag, and I didn't remember that this was on the handle. What is an elementary band teacher without a million stickers? Stickers are really magical. Not only are they incredibly motivating for students when they bring all their stuff and they come in on time, but if they, I have them put them on their name tags, so that is a way that I can mark who has been consistently bringing their stuff. I can't be bothered to keep a list of who brings their stuff, so if the name tags are already there and they have stickers, then I know who gets an award. Mouthpiece sanitizer because you need it always. Random pens. Oh no. This is a uh, trumpet slash brass mouthpiece remover for when it gets stuck. I am not supposed to have this. This is not mine. I will return it to its rightful owner tomorrow. Valve oil. A million pens and pencils and whiteboard markers. I reach in and take the utensil I need. Why organize when you can just throw it in a bag? Paper clips and keys. Where do the keys go? I don't know. A score and parts to Dragon Slayer by Rob Grice. I was going to make a unit for Dragon Slayer, but it was too much like Rob Grice's other tune, Invader, and the kids were reading it and they were like, well, this isn't that exciting. <laughs> Pro tip, if you teach elementary band, you do not have to perform everything you work on. In fact, you shouldn't. Oh, routines for accountable academic discourse. I'd be such a good teacher if I actually used this. <laughs> okay, little packets for students who didn't show up to stuff. Mmm, Janet. She's gonna have to be more responsible in seventh grade. Little scale sheet for clarinets. This is a handout that I made for my students for learning the little drummer boy. I handwrite a lot of my worksheets because I don't have a computer that prints directly to things. It's just too hard. So I just write everything by hand. I found this meme. I had to, uh, I had to edit it a little bit, but it's like, band kids. And then it's a bunch of huskies and it goes, normal, normal, band kid, normal. It was kind of a social experiment. I hung it up in one school and I didn't hang it up in the other school. And the school where I hung that up, the kids kind of became like that. Bugler's Dream is an awesome piece for very first year players. Or um, in the case of my program where the kids work very slowly, it's, um, it was really good for the kids coming back after summer break and they're still learning how to play the notes. More stickers. A student wrote a very, very sweet heartfelt note about why he missed the concert. Oh, I'm still so sorry I did not show up, but I hope you understand. It was really sad. It was a really sad story. <laughs> Sincerely, and he put his name, and then parentheses, the kid who plays clarinet. 
course I remember who you are. I use the Yamaha Advantage book. I have a bunch of random ones that kids leave behind. And uh, then I have them. And I give them to other kids because it's like they need a book to play out of. So bring your stuff. And a bunch of paper clips. So the two years ago, I used this big bag um, to carry my stuff, and then I gave up on carrying so much stuff because my shoulder hurt. But let's see what's in this bag. It's like a what's in, what's in my bag episode that no one cares about because we all have a bunch of crap in our bags and we wish we didn't have it. It's a, like a scrapbooking bag. It has a million pockets for things, and that means for me, but there's a million places where things can get lost. So uh, there's all these, there's a bunch of pens, and of course a bunch of stickers. A student gave this sticker to me, a little like kitten unicorn. I was really smart when I did this. I made a folder that said scores, and I made a folder that said spare parts. <gasps> Midnight Madness! Oh. Yeah, I played Midnight Madness with my students two years ago, and they loved it. It was by Brian Balnages. It was... I recommend that piece for second-year players. Or even really good first-year players. I, I had a couple first-year players playing that. Dragonfire was really fun. Really easy for the kids to put together. I think... I think I introduced it to them two weeks before the concert, and, uh, and they pulled it off. I had uh, music as well as beginning packets with how to put things together in case the kids didn't have the book. But why didn't they have the book, kids? Why were you unprepared for class for a whole year? You know what? I don't blame the kids when that happens. It is really my fault for not taking care of that kind of thing at the very beginning of the school year. That's a tricky part about teaching elementary band is the diligence that is required to really have a good program. There are so many things that the teacher has to do, and there are so many things that the kid has to do, and the teacher just has to be on the students every single time they see them, like, this is what you need. You need to have these things. And I will call your parents to make sure that you have those things next time. It's necessary. It is. <laughs> and it's a thousand times more effective if you do that at the beginning part of the school year um, as opposed to in February when everyone's losing steam. Peace Like a River, I thought this would be a nice one for the... I thought this would be a really nice one for the students to try. They, they got very close, but the ensemble skill was just not quite there yet. The counting was just not quite there yet. So. I think this, is, this piece is one of the reasons why I was inspired to sit down and sit down and um, distill every piece of music to its elements and handwrite all those sheets where all the kids could see all the parts and understand what was happening. And it's Rob Grice again. Thank you, Rob Grice. A notebook full of things that I probably forgot. <laughs> Rolly bag inventory, <laughs> like, like I was ever gonna keep track. Oh my gosh, I had really high expectations of myself. This is like my, my concert setup. When I do my concerts, I have everyone already seated in the cafeteria so that there's no transition. I also alternate the groups that play. So I have, and I have, I have the groups play together too. So I will start usually with hot cross buns because everyone can play it. And I'll have everyone in my first and second and third year, everyone plays hot cross buns together. Then you hear from all the flutes, all the clarinets, and you hear all the instruments. And then I alternate beginning, advanced, beginning, advanced, beginning, advanced. I do a couple songs, usually where the kids sing. And then I end with another song that they can all play together that hopefully the kids can sing together. And then I can hopefully maybe teach the audience something to sing with them, and um, that's a nice way to end the, con the concert, and it's over in 30 minutes. It's beautiful. <laughs> Short concerts are the bee's knees. This is how to get to the concert. Reminders for the concert. Stay in attention position and listen respectfully while other groups play. 
only talk to your neighbor if absolutely necessary. Like, hey, I need another read. You know, um, relax and breathe. Listen like crazy. Getting there first does not make you the winner. Uh, watch Miss Douglas for posture signals. So I will show them, you know, three, two, one. I'll show them things to do with their posture. Enjoy these, and the last one, of course I do this. Enjoy this evening that sums up your year in musical growth. Be proud of your amazing accomplishments. We are so glad you're here. A box with two reeds in it. A flute cleaning rod. This is good scratch paper for later. Oh, hey. It's my mouthpiece. It's the one I was using when I played the when I played the con, so that's where it is. I do have a box 7C. Good to know. I gotta, you know what? I'm gonna play on this. I'm gonna play on this. My evaluation for my second year. I should probably keep this somewhere safer. A spoon for eating my lunch. In the front pocket here. Cold brick march, oh my goodness. My students can't. I don't want to say my students can't play this, but this is not what they're going to be playing in the beginning of the school year. Another evaluation where I met all the standards. Oh, an anti-tarnish strip for something made of silver. Maybe I can use this on my flugel horn. Ooh, some highlighters. Highlighters are nice. Band-aids, because there are always children that bleed. One binder clip, two silver sharpies. I made some instrument flashcards where I showed the, the note, how it looks, and then I showed um, for the instrument, like what the name of it is and how do you play it. So there's the trumpet with two valves down. And I have like a million of them. More post-it notes. A book of rhythm games for perception and cognition. I have never looked at this book, but someone gave it to me. Maybe someday I'll look at it. Oh my gosh. What? Oh no. All these really like handwritten notes with stickers that I never gave to students? Why didn't they get their notes? I spent all this time writing them. What happened here? Not cool. Not cool. Another binder clip. I used this reward system two years ago um, called Thank You Notes. Basically, I would reward kids for being cool, for being nice people, and they can use them to get extra stuff. I feel like I have a limited capacity for systems. It's a really great idea to be appreciative and to thank students for being good people, but it was really hard to keep track of those things. Oh, health office passes. Why do I have like 20 of them? And last but not least, one whiteboard marker and a mechanical pencil. So coming up is going to be my fourth year in my current position and my eighth year teaching. What I am learning is going to be most helpful for me this next year is to limit the systems. Just stay very, very diligent with the small amount of important systems that I have. Um, most importantly, that's going to be management systems and um, creativity systems and routines. I think if those things are strong, then my program will be strong having a strong timeline and touching base with students and communicating with students as much as I possibly can is going to be very important. I'm looking forward to getting back into the swing of things. I'm really looking forward to teaching band again. I love teaching elementary band. It is like, it's my happy place. It's a safe place and I just love it. I can't wait to meet my new students. I can't wait to work with my students that I had last year and the year before and to get to know my current students better. Thank you for joining me in this reassessment of my 
teaching world and my reintroduction into my teaching path. I never want this to come across as a negative thing because I absolutely love my job, but it is important to assess what's working and what's not working. So thank you for coming along for that ride with me. Until next time, stay mindful, stay musical, and stay out of trouble.